Hi, my name is John Michael Caldwell, and I'm an audio engineer currently living in Los Angeles. And this is my home studio. It isn't much, but it is something, especially nice to have while we're in quarantine right now and on lockdown. I thought it might be useful if I talked about Apple Scripts and the importance of the script editor if you're a Mac user in using these scripts to speed up your workflow. These workflows aren't necessarily going to be useful to everybody. My workflow is a template-driven workflow, meaning I start from a template and I import tracks from the client. I don't open the client session and start a mix from their session. Just because normally I have to go in and I have to change a bunch of things and I just want my session to be the way I want it to be, but that doesn't mean you can't use Apple Scripts to make your workflow quicker or to make it more organized. If you're a Mac user, I think you should be utilizing Apple Scripts to the best of your ability and really just dig in and learn as much as you can about applying these scripts. So let me show you the way I'm using Apple Scripts in setting up a workflow from client sessions into my own mix sessions. Let me show you what I mean. So here is my client sessions folder. This is what they sent to me. And these are the song names. And typically whenever I get um, a folder of songs from a client, it's not gonna be this clean. It's going to have, you know, 10 or 15 Pro Tools sessions in it, or maybe they're Logic sessions and I have to either export the audio or they've already exported the audio and they just want me to have the logic session. This is what my mix session folder looks like. It only has my mix template in it so that I can start from scratch and I can have a nice clean organized mix session folder to begin with. So what my goal is is to get their folders into my folders, but in a clean, quick, and efficient way. I'll open the Apple Script. This is what an Apple Script looks like if you haven't seen one. Um, I like to put what I created it in. Up here is the toolbar where you can compile your script. The play button is for running, but I'm going to be pressing Command R to actually run and engage the script. What I want to do is take these folders, which are the names of the songs, and what the script is going to do is that it's going to create new folders with the names of these folders in a destination that I tell it to go. I'll choose my destination, which is my session folder with my template. It will ask me if I want to append the name. Um, I can maybe the band name was in here and I want to take it out, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to append the name. I'm not going to add a prefix either, but I will add a suffix. My suffix is just going to be mix at the end. And now you can see that it created empty folders in my session folder for the band. They're all just empty, but they do have um, my signifier, which is the mix, so that I know that this is the actual song's mix. So the next thing I want to do, since all of these folders are empty, I want to copy the template into each folder. So the way I'm going to do this is another Apple script. I'll use this create selected file in the selected folders script. What I'll need to do is select the folders that I want to copy this template into. So now I'll run the script. It will ask me to select a file to copy. I'll copy my mix template, which is what I want to start with and move. Do I want to add a suffix? Um, yes, I will add a suffix. What the script is going to do is that it's going to copy the name of that folder to this, to my mix template file and then I can add a suffix, and the suffix I'll add as prep because this is going to be a prepping session. And now you can see that it has copied this and renamed this file into these folders. 
and it's a quick and easy way of doing this. So now, I might do something like creating an empty folder inside of all of these as well. So I'll need to select all of the folders I want to create this folder in. The name of the new folder, I'll probably make it something like old sessions. Just something that I can move old things into. And there you have it. And then the next thing in my workflow is I'll bring the session that I want to import into my template down into my folder for each song. I don't have an Apple script of doing this yet. I might do that in the future. And I'll just rename it import. And whenever I'm done importing that into my template, I'll bring it down into old sessions. And then I'll duplicate my mix prep session and I'll rename it version one. That way I know that it's ready to be mixed. And I'll go through every song and do this. I don't just do a song and then mix it, prep a song and mix it. I'll go through the stages of creating all of these and I'll prep everything and then I'll go through and mix everything. So this is how Apple Script can be helpful in my organizational workflow of prepping sessions from client delivered files. But let me turn to Pro Tools and show you a couple of Apple scripts that I think are useful um, to have to speed up workflows and things like that. Imagine this is a mix session and I now have stems that have been printed from a mix and everything's been approved and I'm going to deliver these stems to my client or the record label or whoever it is that I need to deliver the stems to. I want to do it cleanly and I want it to look nice and I want it to look professional. So I want to move this underscore number that Pro Tools puts here because it's just not very flattering inside of Finder whenever you're looking at a bunch of files and you see just a bunch of files with numbers at the end of them that don't really mean anything to the file name. So one way to do this is to come to the clip menu and hit the clip renamer and manually do this for every one, but it can be time consuming. And as you can see, um, you can make mistakes. So it's just not very beneficial to do this this way. Another way of doing it, a quicker way, would be to use the batch renamer inside of the clips list. Um, the batch renamer is really great for renaming clips, especially for renaming tracks, the track batch renamer. Um, so I'll tell it to trim three from the end. It appears to have worked, but there's something innately wrong with the way Pro Tools uses its batch renamer. And what's wrong is that if you navigate to your session folder and open the audio files, it doesn't actually rename the audio files. And that's not what we want. We want it to rename the disk file as well, not just the clip region file. Let me show you an Apple script that I have. I'll be triggering it from my iPad that I'm using Touch OSC on. Um, I might get into that in just a second. And you can see that when I trigger it, I'll just press this button. It goes through them pretty quickly and fairly accurately. And then we can move over to our session folder and check our file names. And the disk files have been renamed, which is exactly what we want. So. This is another example of how using Apple Scripts can be beneficial to your workflow because sometimes things just don't work the way that we want them to and we have to force them to work the way that we need them to to save just a little bit of time. Um, another thing that I can do with um, some Apple Scripts is I can make these clips active and inactive. I can just toggle the inactive and just make it active again. And another thing I can do is just delete tracks. 
that's just another couple of things that I've added. I'm always adding things to Pro Tools. You can make macros, you can save settings, you can open menu items, open windows. Um, the list goes on and on for Apple Scripts. You just have to understand how to use it and be willing to learn how to use it at the best of your ability. If you don't have a way to trigger these things, if you don't have an iPad, if you don't have TouchOSC or something else that can manipulate files and run files in the background in a certain way like Keyboard Maestro, um, I want to show you how you can run these from your toolbar or the menu bar up at the top right corner of your screen. If you just um, open up your script editor application and navigate to the preferences in script editor and inside of the general tab in script editor you'll see a script menu, show script menu in menu bar. Select that. Uh, I like to have show computer scripts and I also like to show the application scripts at the top instead of the bottom that way they're easier to get to. So we can close out of this. We don't need it anymore. And now you'll see that this little Apple script widget that looks like a little paper scroll has now showed up. So now the way that we can add our scripts into Finder is navigating to our application's script folder. Uh, and it will just open it like this. That's all you need to do. And then navigate to the scripts that you have that you want to add to this application script folder. Copy and paste them into this folder. And that's really it. Now, the first time you try running one, you're going to have a little dialog box pop up. And this is what's going to happen. Try running this and it says it needs access. You just press OK. It's fine. And then it runs it. So I hope this video helps a little bit with organizational workflow in Finder for Pro Tools or any other DAW you're using whenever you're getting ready to mix a project. I'll provide all of the links to everything that you saw me use in the description for this video. And you can also download the scripts you saw me use over at my website and I'll provide a link in the description that connects you to that portion of my website. All right, thank you. And if you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, um, go ahead and like it or maybe subscribe if I end up making more videos. That might be really useful and it would let me know that you like the video. Okay, thank you.